Hey everyone, how's it going? Dan here. Happy Friday, October 4th. We're already in October. Uh, today we're going to be talking about metaprompting. And so we'll go through what metaprompting is, and then really we're going to touch on a lot of the different metaprompting methods that have been discussed about in latest research and papers and GitHub repositories and so much. And we'll keep it pretty surface level because I want to cover a wide range, and then in the future we can dive deeper into different ones. Um, and then also we'll go over some tools that can help you with metaprompting. So what is metaprompting? Um, I think it is a prompt engineering method. Uh, so it's, I think it's underneath the kind of prompt engineering umbrella where you basically use LLMs in some way to help you create and refine your prompts. And so that could be you know, using Anthropic's prompt generator to get a first version of a prompt up and running, um, or it could be some of these more kind of in-depth and um, you know, more technically advanced methods that we'll look at today. But generally, it's just having an LLM involved in the process in the same way that you would have an LLM involved in the process when you're writing a blog post, you can do the same when you're writing a prompt. And now we're going to dive into a bunch of these meta prompting methods. You've probably heard of some of them, but if not, you'll be able to get a good overview here. So the first one is called meta prompting. It's from a paper uh, between Stanford and OpenAI. And this method essentially uses a sort of conductor LLM that controls a bunch of different experts. It spins up expert LLMs to help work on the task. And it basically goes through these kind of like iterative process where the conductor is giving instructions to the experts. Those experts, you know, have um, some outputs and the LLM oversees the whole communication between the multiple LLMs, synthesizes their outputs, gives it to the user, um, gets feedback, so on and so forth. And so it's a little technical to set up. It's very similar to multi-persona prompting in a lot of ways, which we've talked about before. Um, and directly from the paper is the template for the kind of conductor LLM. Um, and you can access that in Prompt Hub, and we'll link that below. Uh, but it'll be in the templates uh, page in there. Next up is something a method called Learn from Contrastive Prompts. I believe this was, I'm, I might get this wrong, but I think this is out of Amazon. Um, I forget exactly, but we'll have that in the in the comments below. Um, the biggest differentiator here is using um, negative examples as well as positive examples. Um, so we start with an initial prompt and you know a set of input output pairs. A bunch of prompt candidates are created, um, and then we're going to generate outputs from you know those three candidates. Let's say outputs are evaluated to see if they're good um, and where they are falling short. And then we're going to compare, okay, here is an, a bad output. Here's a prompt that made that. Here's a good output. Here's a prompt that made that. What's the differences between those prompts up there? And then based on that comparison, the LLM will generate a new prompt. So it examines both good and output. So it's very balanced in that way. Um, and it's actually a method I like a lot. And we have a bunch of templates for this one as well available in our blog post. It was just too much to have here. The next and maybe most popular, just given, I think, partially because of the branding, so Automatic Prompt Engineer might have, might be one of the older ones as well. Um, and so this was one of the first kind of, as I mentioned, first meta prompting methods using LLMs to write prompts. Um, similar to the last one we looked at, LLM generates a bunch of prompt candidates based on some demonstrations you share initially. Each prompt is then evaluated using some sort of scoring function, so some quantitative measurement of the outputs. And then they do some search method um, basically to then refine the best prompts by looking at the best outputs and then generating semantically similar variants just to see if that change of semantics could then lead to higher outputs. So generate a bunch of prompts, score and evaluate them, generate new semantic sim uh, semantically similar versions, and then select the version with the highest score once you reach a stopping point. And so here's what that kind of all looks like, where there's proposed ones, they get scored, they get noted of, they make semantically sim uh, similar ones. And again, we have some prompt templates for this as well in the blog post below. Next one is prompt agent. Um, so it starts with initial prompt and some kind of target task. A bunch of outputs are generated and evaluated. Prompt agent is really focused on trying to capture that subject matter expert type knowledge that is so critical in prompt engineering. And so it's similar to the first method we looked at in that way, in that it really tries to use personas in different types of prompting to tap into, you know, a financial analyst, a you know, a medical doctor, these people who have different types of domain knowledge. And then it'll literally 
uh, iteratively refine the promise based on that feedback, um, and use like a tree-like structure, um, you know, going down high reward paths and killing off any um, branches that aren't high reward or aren't as high reward as their neighbors. And we have some templates and examples in our blog post for this one as well. Next up is called conversational problem engineering. It's one of my favorite and it mimics how I think I start to think about problem engineering a lot now. So it starts with, you know, the user selects whatever model it wants to use um, and gives just some input examples. Um, so if we're going to do a summarization task, the input examples could be like a bunch of articles. Uh, the user and CPE, which in this case is just like a chat interface, go back and forth in a chat and they kind of talk about, okay, we want the prompt to do this and output that as good would look like this. This is what we don't want. And so the user, it's very collaborative in this way. So the user can go back and forth. Um, and so the model is really there to kind of extract what the user actually means, which is really hard um, to do for a user when they're first writing a prompt. Even if they're just writing a task description, there's often a lot of details that are missed. And so CPE tries to draw out those details in a chat kind of type of model. A prompt then gets generated. That prompt is sent to a side chat which generates a bunch of outputs, which are then sent back to the user to say, hey, here are the outputs from that prompt. What do you think? What should we change? Um, and so it will take good and bad feedback um, from the outputs and continue this iterative process. And we'll skip that. So this is generally what it looks like where there are user and model, and then there's these side chats, and these are going to be brought into the conversation. And again, templates are available in the blog post below. These last two are more popular, at least in my sphere, in like the kind of software engineering world. Um, so DSPy um, is a, you know, first and foremost, it's like a, a open source repository, um, Python repository that you can leverage and people do pretty easily. Um, it's very code first. There's a bunch of different modules you, you can use. Um, in general, what it does is create these kind of pipelines that allow you to automatically um, refine and iterate on prompts using scoring mechanisms. So we'll get like an initial prompt, it'll go through a pipeline that involves output generation and some scoring method, and then it will get feedback based on the low scores and it kind of try to put that back into the prompt and then generate new prompts and hopefully again rescore and score higher. A bunch of different types of modules in here. We won't go too deep into it, but that's kind of the way to think about it, I would say. Um, so the LLMs do a lot of different things. They will generate the initial prompts, they'll evaluate their prompts, they'll refine them, um, they'll collect the feedback from the users in this um, refinement process as well. And you know it's adaptive, it's code first, um, and it's easy to kind of uh, wield in that way. Another very popular um, you know, open source repository is called TextGrad, and this one's relatively new. I like to think of it as kind of like a like descendant or an improvement on DSPy. Um, and the focus here is less on scoring, like quantitative scoring, and more on textual gradients. Um, so textual, like natural language feedback versus DSPI is, I think, more quantitative in that way. And so base version of the prompt, and then a second LLM or human reviews some of the outputs, gives natural language feedback. Um, and this feedback is that textual gradient highlighting the areas for improvement. And the original prompt and feedback are sent to another LLM to generate an improved version. Um, and this kind of keeps going until the process is, is done according to the user. Um, and so this one is, I really like a lot and we have templates for kind of each one of these steps laid out an example in the blog post below. And again, we already talked about the main difference. Okay, and as we wrap up here, we'll look at a couple of tools that help you do some of this. So we have a prompt generator and prompt hub. Um, it will adjust based on the model provider you're using so you just give your prompt a name, select whichever model provider, input a task description, and then we will generate a prompt tailored um, to that model provider because every every model provider is different. Even the models within um, the same family or the same company are different. You know, O1 versus GPT-4.0 require different prompting, and it's free to use. Anthropic is a great one. I think they kind of really do a great job across all of their prompt engineering efforts. It's accessible in their dev console. They open source the meta prompt itself, which I think is great. Um, it's tailored for Anthropic models and you have to use your tokens to do it. It's still quite cheap, uh, but just something to know. And then just this past week, OpenAI launched their own system instructions generator um, inside their playground. So you can generate system instructions for whatever task you're working on. Um, 
it's only system instructions and it's not available for the O1 models yet since those don't support system messages. And again, tailored uh, for the OpenAI models. And through a little bit of prompt injection, um, we we're able to pull out the what we believe to be the system instruction generator um, prompt, so the meta prompt, find it, and we added that to prompt hub. If you want to check it out, um, add it to your library. You can, you know, create a project with this as a template as well. Um, and I think that is it for today. So happy prompting. If you have any questions about any of this meta prompting stuff, let us know. If there's anything you want us to go deeper in, let us know as well. We plan to go deeper in a few of these areas. See ya.